All right, and uh, so we are looking at uh, we are looking at uh, corporate uh, corporate corporations and uh, specifically the role of the CS, the role of the certified secretary, the role of the certifi certified secretary in terms of what year, ensuring that uh, boardrooms contribute positively to the development and the success of what year organizations and the success of organizations. That is what we are doing here. That is what we are doing here. So let me know whether you great students of mine are able to see my book here, chapter one, the emergence of boardroom dynamics in corporate governance. Are you able to see what I'm sharing? Are you able to see my screen? The emergence of boardroom dynamics in corporate governance. It's a word document. If you're able to see it, please mention there why for yes. Mention there why for yes, so that I can continue. I should not be sharing. You know, it's possible for me to share quite uh, different things. All right. Thank you, Tieno. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it will be very important for me to just uh, do a recap of what we discussed in our last session. Remember what we said in our last session here is the fact that uh, when we talk of boardroom, we know, of course, what a boardroom is. This is that room which will be having the decision makers, top decision makers of any organization. It is where the directors will be sitting. Now, this boardroom has evolved. The directorship of companies have uh, really evolved with time. Ladies and gentlemen, and that evolution is necessary because of the dynamics at play. You know, like as we shall see in our today's session, initially, the directors were only concerned with one stakeholder. Who was who? The shareholder. The shareholder. But I mean, people are now again realizing that eh, it is not about just the shareholder. There are other important stakeholders, all right, of the organization who have got uh, expectations. So then you as a, a certified secretary, what are you supposed to be doing in terms of uh, this kind of changes, changes in expectations, changes in terms of, for example, employees that you are taking, of course, we expect, you know, right now we are talking of Generation Z. So as directors, how should we understand these young employees who are joining us like today? So there is a lot of changes uh, going on. And that is why in this, yes, certified secretary course, they brought a very important paper called what here? Yeah, boardroom dynamics. As we discuss up there as directors, of course, there will be a lot of what here? Yeah, politics, even at director level. You don't expect in this case here, like the board directors here to have like constant love throughout. No, things are going to change. The person that you love today may be your enemy in the next minute. So then the question is, you as a certified secretary, and of course you are chairperson of the board, how do you hold this thing, all of it together? So that whatever discussion that will be happening at the board level, at the board level, they should be those discussions which are driving the company towards what your success, success, regardless of the changes that are happening. Now, remember, as this dynamism is going on, as these changes are going on, the directors will be required to deliberate a lot at the board level. So, of course, one of the roles of the CS will be to look at uh, whatever discussions that these guys are talking about, that these directors are talking about. These discussions here, are they within the law? Are they within the law? And that is why even if you look at it from our Kenyan space, the political space, at times you get the president pushing things, it could be in good faith. 
But I mean, he may be lacking in this case here, certified secretaries. Leave these years that you're talking about here. Those are the ceremonies you should be looking at. I mean, we need in this case here a competent CS who should be going to a competent CS who should even be a lawyer, who should be going to the president and telling the president, fine, you guys discuss this at the boardroom at your cabinet meetings, but this and this and this is illegal. Is illegal. Perhaps that should be the role of who? The attorney general. So in terms of uh, boardroom dynamics, the CS role is becoming even stronger, even stronger. And that is why this course is a very, very important course. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we talk of boardroom dynamics, for us to be able to steer forward uh, this ship, which of course uh, is, uh, I mean, the way it is, things are not very easy. Companies, there is a lot of turbulence within companies here, then we will need a board of directors that is visionary, that is transformative, that is able to uh, do things in a very agile way, flexible, flexible. And that is why we are studying these boardroom dynamics, a very, very important subject uh, in this CS uh, advanced level. So today I'm looking at chapter number one, the emergence of boardroom dynamics in corporate governance. And by the end of this session, we shall be able to basically use to complete topic number one. On completion of this topic, you should be able to define boardroom dynamics, the evolving focus on corporate governance, the three phases of board evolution, because the board has really evolved. Then we have the building blocks of a progressive board. As we expect so many changes to be happening, changes coming as a result of uh, IT, all right? We expect to have what we call a progressive board, all right? A board in this case here, for example, even in itself is investing in training of the board members. We must be progressive. So then what are those key building blocks that we need? to be able to run what we call a progressive board. Then we have number five, by the end of the session, you must be able to know the impact of boardroom dynamics on organizational performance, interest in human factors, the HR, management of talent, organizational culture, politics, ETC, because these things bring about what your changes. Shifts in approaches to leadership, Remember, initially, companies would really survive with a, what we call dictatorship, all right? What in this case here was being built from up there. That is top, bottom approach. People would work with that kind of leadership. But right now, there are so many changes we as directors are supposed to be knowing. The kind of people that we have today will be those kind of people, those kind of stakeholders, kind of employees who would expect to be involved. So they would want what we call a participative kind of leadership, servant leadership, where you put their interests ahead. Then we have, ladies and gentlemen, shifts or rather focus on ethics, very, very important. A broader model for corporate governance, organizational failures and impact on boardroom dynamics, role of the corporate secretary in boardroom dynamics. Role of the corporate secretary in boardroom dynamics definition. So I start with 1.1 among those things that I've read. Definition, boardroom dynamics. Boardroom dynamics refers to the interactions, interactions, relationships, and the behavioral patterns among the members of a board of directors within a company or organization. How do we work with each other? Collaboration, very important, all right? How do we relate here? There will be a lot of interactions between board members. It encompasses the way directors communicate, how we collaborate and make decisions in board meetings and other governance related activities. Understanding and managing boardroom dynamics is crucial for the effective functioning of the board. Consequently, the success of the organization. So, ladies and gentlemen, when we talk of boardroom dynamics, basically we're looking at uh, how do we talk between ourselves as directors. 
will need in this case here to collaborate, to work together as a team. That's what is expected. But of course, as we get a, along, there are chances that uh, two or three people within the board, they may not be seeing eye to eye. Then we, as the chairman and the CS of these boards, we have a bigger role there to ensure that uh, as much as people are not seeing eye to eye, how do we align their interests with the interest of the company to ensure that uh, the company at the end of the day succeeds? The evolving focus on corporate governance. Corporate governance has evolved significantly over the years, reflecting changing business environments, societal expectations, and the recognition of the importance of uh, responsible business practices. The evolving focus on corporate governance can be understood through the following key stages. Stage number one is where we had the shareholder being the most important stakeholder. It's called shareholder primacy, mid 20th century. In the mid 20th century, corporate governance was primarily focused on shareholder primacy, where the interests of the shareholders, particularly large institutional investors, were given paramount importance. The primary goal was to protect and maximize shareholder value, often at the expense of the other stakeholders. Ladies and gentlemen, remember corporate governance basically gives us eh, those principles through which companies are controlled. So we are being told here under shareholder primacy during those old, old days, in this case, it is the shareholders who had a bigger say. The other stakeholders like employees had no say at all. But now things evolved. We went to what we call stakeholder oriented approach. Stakeholder oriented approach. Now here, we are looking at all the stakeholders. Who has a stake in this company? What are their expectations? And we try to meet those expectations as much as we can. Because, ladies and gentlemen, surely, if we focus on the shareholder, we know, for example, that uh, we have the surrounding community. This surrounding community, if you're not good to it, they may sabotage our operations. We have seen them doing that to tallow oil. The community here, the community can come and pick it. These guys can come and, for example, they say today, we are sitting on the road, like 500 people, and there is no lorry that will move out of this particular area. So you can't tell me that you would want to concentrate with the shareholders and the shareholders in the spirit of maximizing profits, they'll say, hey, pay employees peanuts, pay employees nothing. If employees are paid nothing, then their contribution to the company will be nothing. And that is why corporate governance, in terms of how we direct and control the operations of this entity, we have to look at all stakeholders. This is a great evolution. As business complexity grew, there were, was a shift towards a stakeholder-oriented approach to corporate governance. This perspective recognized that companies impact a wider range of stakeholders, including employees, customers, suppliers, communities, and the environment. The other evolution, ladies and gentlemen, that we saw here is the introduction of uh, independence, independent directors. Remember, we have got two types of directors, ladies and gentlemen, as we discussed in our last class. We have the executive, and then we have this non-executive. Executive directors are those directors who stay in the company. Not like they live there, but I mean, they spend most of their time in the company to oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the company. Those are executive. And then we have non-executive. So now non-executive, ladies and gentlemen, they'll come to the organization whenever we have a meetings. In terms of corporate governance evolution, now we need these non-executive directors, non-executive directors to do what here. We need non-executive directors to be independent to be independent. We need non-executive directors to be independent. So we are being told here, board independence and accountability. Regulatory reforms and corporate scandals highlighted the need for independent directors who could provide objective oversight and a challenge management decisions. The focus shifted to ensuring that boards were composed of a majority of independent directors to enhance their effectiveness and protect shareholder 
interest here. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, we are supposed to talk about a balanced board of directors. So if you have got, say, the dependent ones, the executive ones, if the entire board uh, is a board of what year, if the entire board is a board of, uh, is a board of say, 10 directors, we expect in this case here to have five being executive and the other five being what year, non-executive or independent. But should we have an odd number? If the number of the directors is odd, like 11, then six should be what year independent? Independent. Five in this case here should be what year? The executive guys, the dependent guys here. All right? So th these are the evolutions here, basically, which are coming to strengthen leadership in a company, which are coming to strengthen leadership in a company leadership in a company. All right. So the, ladies and gentlemen, we move on. Then we have the role of these uh, boards in terms of uh, corporate social responsibility and sustainability. Companies were expected to consider their social and environmental impacts, engage with stakeholders, and uh, demonstrate responsible business practices. ESG, environmental, social, and governance, factors became integral to evaluating companies' long-term performance and risk management, risk management. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't want to just thrive this year. We don't want to maximize our current year's profits at the expense of our, our long-term sustainability. We would want, ladies and gentlemen, in this case here, to run sustainable organizations that will be able to outlive us. And if we'd want that to happen, then leadership has to be cognizant of this, CSR, has to be cognizant of what here, sustainability practices, especially anything in this case here that uh, is talking about, anything in this case here that is talking about, anything in this case here that is talking about climate change. Climate change, all right? Then number five, we have gender diversity gender diversity we have gender diversity we have gender diversity and inclusivity initiatives aimed at increasing the representation of women on boards and in leadership position positions gained momentum recognizing the value of diverse perspectives in decision making i mean this all these are evolutions would want a situation where, ladies and gentlemen, our boards are as inclusive as possible. We should be able to have, in this case here, people who are able differently being also part of these boards. We need women. We need men to be part of these boards. We don't want a situation where we have just a homogeneous board. No, no. Number six, we have focus on ethics and corporate culture. Boards are expected to foster a culture of integrity, transparency, and ethical behavior throughout the organization. A strong ethical culture helps build the trust among stakeholders and promotes long-term sustainability. Ladies and gentlemen, I would want us to do some experiment. I don't want you guys to put your cameras on, but I would want wherever you are, I would want all of us to turn the, to touch their chin. Could we can all of us? Let's touch our chins like this. Let's touch our chins like this. Great, great. So I'm so sure all of you have touched this section, knowing very well. I'm so sure you know very well this is not where the chin is. You simply touched it because you saw Mualimu touching this and calling it what here, a chin. Our chains are here. But now the question is, how comes nobody was touching this side, this place? All of us are touching where? Here. It's because of wrong leadership. As your leader, I touched the wrong place to be a chain. And you guys followed. And that is why board of directors, ladies and gentlemen, are supposed to lead by example. We are supposed to lead by example. Yeah, Lucy, when you're laughing like that, I'm so sure I must have caught you, not you alone, but many, many others. 
Many, many others must have uh, touched the wrong place for a chin. True, you see? And you see, that is how it happens. You as directors, ladies and gentlemen, as you go up there, please don't steal. This appetite of taking a company's resources to benefit you as an individual is bad. Don't lead with what here yeah, bad examples up there. Because the moment you start moving that way, then everyone else is going to do like that. And then the company will just collapse. Board dynamism. Things are changing. I mean, every day we are employing employees. We are bringing people who are simply what are thieves. I read uh, somewhere in uh, the Daily Nation that about 75% of employees go to their workplaces every morning with an intention of stealing. That's Kenya. Things are changing. In those old days, old days, earlier days, ladies and gentlemen, people would not really steal as much. But now, if there is anything that is really on top of everybody's agenda, how do I drive a Land Cruiser V8? And your salary is 200000 and yet, yet you want a big machine. You would want, in this case here, your children to go to Brooker House with a salary of 200000 And with competition now in the society, what is happening? People get to the government offices. They get to their great offices here with an intention of what here? Stealing. So as the board, under this boardroom dynamics, we're understanding that now things are really changing. We must ensure that uh, we bring in a culture which is what here, yeah, promoting ethics, good norms, good principles. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you as CSS, I have to tell you this. You don't need a very, very big house to be happy. You can't sleep in two bedrooms at the same time. Trust you me. Even as a human being, I mean, in terms of food, it doesn't matter how much you eat. I'm so sure even eating by the time you finish your first plate. I mean, the utility, this level of satisfaction goes down by the time you're eating your second plate. I mean, you don't need so much. And I'm not saying that we should not be very aggressive, but stealing should never be part of us. This is something that we need to fight from the board level, from the top. If, for example, we are talking about government, stealing should be arrested, not down here. Stealing should be arrested at the cabinet level, up there. The moment it is arrested up there, then down here, ladies and gentlemen, trust you, me, all of us, we are just like good sheep. We shall be able to follow and do exactly what our leaders are doing. And as a CS, you must be able to basically, you know, as a CS, you'll be seeing so many things. Like now, directors will wake and say today, we want a board allowance of 50000 if you don't give us this board allowance of 50,000, there's no discussions at all. I mean, you and the chairman must look at this entire thing, trying to convince, come in between the company and these greedy people. Tell them that, you know what? I mean, this thing has to be planned. I mean, you want me to pay you guys 50,000? Again, as to what? What profits? Last year, we made losses, for example. All right? We would rather, in this case here, benchmark. All right? We would rather, in this case here, connect. Our, our, our allowances then, which should be increased, with performance. Let's tie the two. So you see now we are getting ourselves as certified secretaries. We are getting ourselves in between what here, a rock and a hard place. All right. So we must know that uh, when it comes to unethical practices, there are so many ways. They don't have to steal directly. They can steal even in terms of time. You get directors who are not coming for meetings, but they're the number one to claim the allowances for meetings they never sat down for, all right? So things are changing. And as a current CS, you must keep abreast with all these changes and uh, or else you'll be swept under the carpet. All right, ladies and gentlemen, then of course we have technology and digital governance, things are changing. You can't be that CS 
who does not understand how advanced Excel works. You can't be that CS who is doing uh, board minutes, who is doing board minutes on uh, these uh, normal books, minutes books, the old ones. No. Ladies and gentlemen, we must appreciate that uh, CS running how, how boards are being run. These boards are being run as, uh, for, as if, for example, they are projects. So I must be very good in PM tools, project management tools, all right? So I must be able to go to Microsoft Office, all right, and do so many things in Microsoft Office. So I'm taking minutes where, in this case, I'm able to write a date. That date is tied, all right? And then, of course, in this case here, when I say that this person should be able to do this and this, I should be able to work with technology in a way that this technology should even be able to remind me. Because as a CS, is like I'm a leader there. When, when, when they come in this case here to read in the next meeting, previous minutes, I mean, I should be aware of what, I, what is happening. When I ask certain director to report on what they did as per the last meeting's resolution, I should have known that this guy is just saying uh, things which are not making even sense. He has done nothing. Why? Because I'm a, a good in terms of project management, because of technology. All right. Everything, for example, that the board brings on the table that would want, for example, to do this and this, would want to go and invest in marketing here and there. You as the CS, of course, you are the silent uh, chairman. You should be able to look at, for example, return on investment. That is why in CS, we are teaching you a lot of uh, courses in financial accounting and reporting. All right. So in this case, you should be able to go there in Excel and compute very fast. What is the return? How much are you going to earn? So that as you are sending even content, to these directors here to reflect on before they come to the board, you should really be very exposed to what is happening. And you can only be very exposed to what is happening if you are good in terms of technology. So technology, you're not looking at just Excel, no. Even these ERPs, all right? If you're a CS in this case, you must be good in tax laws, all right? So as these guys are discussing, because I've attended some meetings here, you will go to a meeting and then you get directors saying, you know what, our money, our board meeting allowances, if you're getting 30,000, let it come as it is, 30,000. No tax, nothing. You should go tell them, no, this is illegal. All right? Because automatically, when you are a CS, you are a lawyer to the company. You should be able to advise. All right? Things are changing, ladies and gentlemen. And very, very soon, you'll even get yourself as a CS, even in jail, for lack of seeing some things. So the CS role is becoming stronger. CSs are being paid heavily outside here. But again, they are carrying a very, very, very big responsibility. And that is why adoption of IT in whatever that we do is very, very important, as we're being told here in boardroom dynamics. Very important. We must be good in terms of IT. So I would want to get some feedback from you guys up to here with my discussions. Are we really together? Are you able to pick a few things here and there? Or am I just talking to myself? Are we together? Are we together? You can just mention why for yes. Are we together? Are we together? CS yes, is a very important course. Very important course. All right, Victoria, thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, now then we continue here. Nope, I've shared the wrong document. Should be this one here. So then if you allow me, I'll be able to go straight away to the three phases of board evolution. How, how have these boards evolved? How have they changed with the time? So initially we used to have that board that we would call ceremonial. You would basically appoint like the Martin Odwars of this world, put them there in your company. Not because you would want them to come and assist you to make decisions, no. Because you would just want to be associated. They were basically being used as marketing 
uh, marketing who uh, I would I call these guys. These guys, not not uh, not marketing representative, but um, I mean to promote our brand, not because of uh, decision making. No, so we have a ceremonial board refers to a board of directors that lacks active decision making authority and serves primarily as a symbolic or honorary entity. In some cases, companies, organizations may establish ceremonial boards as a gesture, gesture of recognition or as, as part of their corporate social responsibility efforts without granting them significant governance responsibilities. So characteristics of a ceremonial board may include limited decision-making authority. They were not even being involved in decision-making at all. Prominent individuals or dignitaries Members of ceremonial boards are often prominent individuals, dignitaries, or public figures with significant accomplishments or reputations. And I like the Mount Kenya, Mount Kenya University uh, chairman. This guy is a genius. This guy went and uh, took in very serious personalities and they gave them board positions. And of course, those guys were so high up there in terms of the political uh, space in Kenya here. Yeah. They will not get time to go and, uh, I mean, even sit for any board there. He was able to use that to market the university. That's one of the reasons why the university is uh, as big as it is. All right. So prominent individuals, recognition and public relations here, lack of regulatory responsibilities. They don't have anything really. Now, from there, ladies and gentlemen, we have what we call liberated boards. Now, boards which are at liberty to help us make water decisions. They, they are independent. These are board of directors that operate with a high degree of independence, autonomy, and authority in decision making. Free from undue influence or control by company executives, significant shareholders, or other external parties. Characteristics of a liberated board in corporate governance may include independence and objectivity, autonomous, autonomous means that independence, independent, autonomous decision making, a liberated board operates with a significant degree of autonomy and is empowered to make strategic decisions and oversee management without interference from external stakeholders, focus on long-term value creation, because they're independent. They're all actually providing oversight. It prioritizes the long-term sustainable growth and value creation for the company and its shareholders over short-term gains or interests. Then we have proactive risk oversight. The board takes a proactive approach to risk oversight and is actively engaged in identifying, assessing, and mitigating risks that may impact the company's performance and reputation open and transparent communication. They're at liberty, they're independent. They'll be able to call things as they are. There is open and transparent communication between the board and management, fostering a culture of collaboration and a constructive dialogue. Accountability and responsibility, the board, unlike now the ceremonial board, the board here takes accountability for its decisions and actions and acts responsibly in fulfilling its fiduciary duties to shareholders and the other who stakeholders. Remember, a fiduciary position is a position of trust. We are putting you up there because we trust you. Should you go against what we entrusted you with, and of course start stealing, then we can take you very, very easily to jail. So we have ceremonial boards, we have liberated boards, and then we have progressive boards. It refers to a board of directors that embraces innovation, adapts to change, and actively seeks opportunities to drive the organization forward. And the characteristics are here. We have a visionary leadership. They have a vision. And they'll always be talking about the vision of the company to other employees and stakeholders. A progressive board provides visionary leadership and sets a clear strategic direction for the company. Embraces innovation. It encourages innovation and creativity within the organization. Agility means what here? 
flexibility. It's able to respond quickly to changing market conditions, industry disruptions, and emerging what year trends. Ladies and gentlemen, when COVID hit us, there were so many colleges which were not agile enough. These guys, in this case here, decided to stick with brick and mortar kind of uh, trainings up to date. There are colleges that don't have online classes. RCM College, we swung with speed and we were very agile, all right? And that is why if you look at some of the classes we have today, like business data analytics, I mean, we are looking at classes that have got like 500 students in total. So why, why do we benefit? We benefited because of what year? Agility. You respond quickly to changes. There are many industry disruptions coming. For example, look at uh, these uh, bed and breakfast, uh, uh, the air, bed and breakfast models. I mean, they, 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 they're giving these big hotels around for their money. Hilton's and the other hotels. Of course, they must have had other reasons of closing, but trust you me, the air B and B, I mean, is one of those reasons that, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we must be aware of these industry disruptions that are with us. If you talk about boardroom dynamics, industry disruptions are there. And if you talk about progressive boards, these are not boards that just come. You, you know, I've attended so many boards and I really, one, and people are being paid heavily. Uh, people are being paid heavily for doing nothing in these board meetings. So you get, ladies and gentlemen, a situation where just people go to a school. For example, they are board members of a school, all right? Whatever they are discussing there, those are old agendas. They don't change and their things are changing. I mean, for example, if today I was a board member of Alliance High School, I know that every student in Kenya here would be interested in getting the Alliance education. If this guy is here, for example, would go to the various libraries that we have, they partner with libraries, and the only thing they'll need to do is to buy those big screens. All right? All right? And then ask, in this case here, I mean, they, they can have a business model where they share, revenue share. They, 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 tell, they tell in this case here that anybody who wants alliance education, blah, 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 they can start with, uh, study with us uh, uh, technologically, online, through Zoom and through these things, and they'll be surprised. They'll be able to get so many followers. Their people will be able to chuck off their students here from some of these schools here and there, study using those television uh, TVs and, of course, the Zoom model like that. And that can only happen if some of these organizations have progressive boards, progressive boards. Is there anybody, ladies and gentlemen, who can give me an example of a company that you think in Kenya here has a progressive board? Thanks, Grace. You find this to be relevant. Karibu sana. And please, after your CPA, do, do. CS, it's a very, very good course that so many people do not know about. Very good course. Yeah, like Safaricom, of course. Of course, Safaricom, these guys are what here? Yeah, they are very agile. Trust you, ladies and gentlemen, were, were it not for the innovation, innovativeness of Safaricom, by today, Safaricom will not be there. These guys are very innovative. They know how to seize whatever opportunities that come their way. That's why they have gone to Ethiopia. They may be suffering today, but I'm so sure in a few years uh, from today, from what I'm reading, these guys, the moment they penetrate, you know, Ethiopia has got a population of uh, over 100 million. The moment they penetrate and they get like just 30% of that population, your banks like KCB, I'm told that uh, by Emmanuel here, like uh, KCB, the way it's growing, I mean, the biggest bank in terms of assets, asset base of KCB, they can only reach there because of what innovation, because of having progressive what here, progressive boards. Progressive boards are boards that listen to, for example, employees. Thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, and this guy, Coca-Cola, great. Coca-Cola, great. Now you can see, ladies and gentlemen, here we have 
both diversity and expertise. You can't tell us that uh, we have um, a progressive board and this board is made up uh, of only accountants. No. We need thoughts from many people, different people. All right. I would want to see women there. I would want to see disabled people there. I would want to see, in this case, yeah, people of color. I would want to see white men there, like Safarico. If you can afford, if, for example, as a gentleman, your, your company's board membership, we are looking at something like 30. Please try as much as possible to have board members coming from different tribes. Don't have that kind of a situation where in the board, for example, you can even decide to discuss the entire, all right, uh, 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 agenda and resolutions in Kimeru. No, no, no. You want board diversity and diversity also in terms of what expertise. Then we have stakeholder engagement. If you don't involve people, if you don't have what we call uh, uh, particip participation, people participating, then automatically the courts like we are seeing uh, in this case here, our Supreme Court, doing out of injustice to the president, to the government, simply because they forgot to involve people. Progressive boards actively engage with various stakeholders, including shareholders, employees, customers, suppliers, yes. Environmental, social and governance focus. Progressive boards incorporate environmental, social and the governance factors into their decision making processes. All right, great. I'm seeing a comment here. CCBA to be precise. Great. Now, please listen. I would want in this case here to share something very important here with you. Something very important with you. Progressive boards. Progressive boards. Very important. Is there anybody here who is working for a company that does not have a board of directors? That it is one man show kind of a company. Or even if the board is there, even if the board is there, they simply don't have a voice. Please don't fear sharing this information with me because we'd want to make this course as practical as possible. This is a course that I would want to make as practical as possible. We shall overcome, Jeremiah. We shall overcome. Now, this is an integrated report. This is an integrated report of EABL. EABL. You can see, like, for example, they have strategy enablers, aspirational and accessible innovations, digital transformation, route to consumer, reputation society, managing risk, supply footprint, ETC, our people. Then they have something they are calling corporate governance. They have what we call board of directors, Executive Committee, Corporate Governance Statement. So I would want us to go to page 106, where they are talking about Board of Directors. Yeah, our leadership. So our leadership, I can see we have Dr. Martin Odur, Mr. Dialan, Niger, Mr. Leo Breen, Ms. Jane Karuku. Now, this is independent non-executive director and group chairman. Non-executive director and a group vice chairman. We have non-executive director. You can see when they joined, they're also giving you the age, nationality, just to try to show you how balanced they are. 
diversity. Like this guy is 67 years. This is a young man for two years as a vice chairman. Resigned on 1st July. You, you're being told everything. Nationality, South African. You can see the board experience, ETC, very nice. You can see we have got women. Like this lady, is a, she's a member of ISPAC, RISPA Ohaga, all right? You can see Miss Karo Musioka, 51 years. This is 47 years, all right? And you can see board dynamism here. You can see guys are moving out. Like this guy called Jafet Kato resigned on 28th February. Mr. John Ulanga, Tanzanian, Czechia, diversity. You can see we also had this guy must have been quite an old guy, which is very good in terms of uh, diversity and inclusivity, 72 years, Ugandan. So you can see we have Mr. Jimmy Mugerwa, Ugandan, Miss Ori Okolo, Kenyan, Mr. Felix Okoboi, Ugandan, 52 years. You can see we have a lady here. Of course, men are more, but I mean, this is the group company secretary, Catherine Maundu. Great. She's only 44 years old. Great. You can see we also have an Indian there. How would you assess uh, the board of directors in terms of inclusivity, the board of directors of uh, EABL, from what you guys have been able to see? How would you assess them in terms of uh, inclusivity and diversity? They may not be 100% because I've not seen anybody there who is a PWD. People with disability, they may not be 100%, but at least they are trying. You can see in terms of diversity, different nationalities, different age groups, vijana, they're trying. All right. They've been able to, they've been able to uh, partition their board into executive and executive. I mean, what else do you need? That's why we we'll say that these guys here are what year? Yeah, I can give them three. Great. <laughs> In a scale of one to five, I'll give them three. Great. And then, of course, when you look at these reporters and gentlemen, they discuss quite a lot of stuff. If you go down, like now the executive committee, executive committee, you can see we have a, a great people there. Great people there. You can see like they have this guy here. The young man. There is only one bite. I don't know what that bite is. I'm not here to market them. You can see they have a corporate governance statement. The EABL board is committed to implementing and adhering to good corporate governance and the best practice. Corporate governance underpins the processes and the structure used to direct and manage the business and affairs of the company towards enhancing business prosperity and the corporate accountability with the ultimate objective of uh, realizing long-term shareholder value whilst taking into account the interest of other stakeholders. EABL is committed to the highest standards of corporate governance and business ethics. The board considers that good governance achieved through an ethical culture, comparative performance, effective control, and legitimacy can create sustainable value and enhance long-term equity performance. The company has instituted systems to ensure that high standards of corporate governance are maintained at all levels of the organization and are in compliance with the Capital Markets Authority, Capital Markets Authority Code of Corporate Governance practices for issuers of securities to the public, the CMA Code, as well as the equivalent guidelines for listed companies in Tanzania and Uganda. Besides complying with CMA, the company has committed to an embedding internal rules of engagement to support corporate governance. These internal guidelines are constituted in the code of business conduct to which every director and employee commits to comply. The COBC is aligned to globally accepted standards and meets the requirements of local and international applicable laws and regulations. 
It guides activities in dealing with employees, customers, suppliers, competitors, government, and the community at large. The COBC also articulates the company's policy on insider trading. We shall be looking at this insider trading in this subject, where you take advantage of confidential information that you have by virtue of your fiduciary position, by virtue that you are the CS of the company. So you know that this company will be declaring great profits, say, next year. And then you buy shares of EABL this year. So that next year, you'll be able to sell them at a profit, huge profit. That's called doing business from an insider's perspective. It's illegal. Directors, management, staff members, and related parties are instructed during closed periods not to trade in the company's shares while in position, possession of an insider information not available to the public. So the framework has been given there. Very, very good. Please, I would want you, if there are two things that I would want you to download, but I'll share this with my students. I would want you to have uh, the integrated report of EABL, the most recent one, and uh, the integrated report of uh, Safaricom, the most recent one, because you as CSS will be required to draft those things. If it's not drafting them, you'll be required here to look at them. You'll be told in this case here that somebody has uh, done these things. Can you go through them? And then you give us legal aspects of the same. So it's important you become good at drafting them. You can only become good at drafting them if you have this kind of copies here. They will do very well. All right. Now, then I should be able to move on pretty fast to building blocks, building blocks of a progressive board. A progressive board is characterized by forward thinking, strategic vision, and commitment to driving positive change within the organization. To effectively function as a progressive board, it must be built upon several key building blocks that contribute to its success and effectiveness. A progressive board typically refers to a board of directors or leadership team that is forward thinking and focused on driving continuous improvement and innovation within an organization. You are not a liability in that particular company by being a director. You're supposed to contribute and you're supposed to, in this case, to see far. We must be agile. We must be a progressive board that will be able to create lots of value to this company and ensure that this company is uh, run sustainably, uh, sustainably. The building blocks, again, we are repeating ourselves. We shall keep repeating ourselves throughout diversity and inclusion. It can't be a progressive board if, of course, it's not a diverse board. So diverse perspectives, a progressive board values diversity in terms of skills, backgrounds, and perspectives to foster creativity and well-rounded decision-making. Inclusive culture promotes an inclusive environment where all members feel heard and respected, ensuring a variety of voices contribute to what here, to discussions, vision and mission, clarity, clearly defines and communicates the company's vision and mission, aligning the board's efforts with the long-term goals of the company. Strategic planning, long-term focus, develops and executes a strategic plan. If you are a board member today of any company, you might see as students, if you are a member of a board, a board of a company, a company that doesn't have a strategic plan, you are not a progressive board. You are a useless. I know there's nothing like useless, but please make changes there. And ensure that there is a strategic plan that is being followed through. A strategic plan that looks beyond short-term goals, considering the evolving landscape and anticipating future challenges and opportunities. Adaptability is open to adjusting strategies in response to changing circumstances and market conditions. Risk management. Proactive boards take a proactive stance 
towards identifying and mitigating risks, ensuring the company is prepared for challenges. Innovation encourages a culture of innovation to explore new opportunities and stay ahead of the competition. Technology and data governance, digital transformation embraces technology to enhance efficiency, productivity, and competitiveness. Data-driven decision-making utilizes data like big data to inform decision-making processes, ensuring decisions are based on accurate and relevant information. Leadership development, they also develop themselves. Succession planning ensures a pipeline of skilled leaders by actively planning for the succession of key roles. Professional development invests in ongoing training and development for board members to enhance their skills and knowledge. So succession planning, ladies and gentlemen, succession planning is a big thing. Like now you can't see Equity Bank beyond James Mwangi. As much as he's a very good gentleman who really understands his business, but I mean, we are human beings and we are mortals. Things can happen. So if they happen really, what will happen to Equity Bank? Of course, it will continue, but not at the same level. The same case with the RCM. We can't see RCM beyond Aura. Although nowadays I'm taking a back seat a little bit, a back seat a little bit, especially in terms of management. Like now I've never stepped in any of our offices from last year, August. From last year, August. I'm trying to groom young men and women, of course, who should be able to take after me and ensure that even if I was to die, this thing is to prosper and become big and big to assist generations coming. So if you're working for a company whose board does not know about who should take over, they don't believe in shadowing. You know, we should be able to have like a shadow CEO, a shadow this and this who are basically monitoring what the current CEO and board of directors are doing with a, an objective of taking over. If we don't have a section of plan, then we are not a progressive board here. We are not a progressive board. If you're not talking to stakeholders, if you don't have an open communication system, then we are lacking on a very key pillar of progressive boards. We can't talk of being a progressive board if we don't understand any CSR activities, all right? It can only be called a progressive board if it has this very important building block. We must be able to evaluate the performance of directors. How many times, for example, they come for their meetings? How effective were they? Like right now, uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa government uh, cabinet secretaries, these guys are on a retreat to basically measure the performance of each individual CS. How would you rate the, our, 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 our cabinet secretaries, not, not certified secretaries? How would you rate in that scale of one to five? Is there any cabinet secretary you can easily give five and be very objective here? Be very objective here, like Kindiki. I think Kindiki, despite uh, banditry, it is, this guy is doing very well. He's doing very well. But again, there are other guys there that we can give what here a, Z, a zero there, all right? So if it's a progressive board, we must be able to open ourselves to evaluation. We must be able to accept criticism. We grow by accepting to be criticized. Nobody is an angel. If you're to take these uh, uh, boards, this company is here to the next level, ladies and gentlemen, we need board performance evaluation, regular assessments, collaboration, and teamwork. If you get any board member who does not want to collaborate totally, where in this case, of course, majority of the members are not able to talk to each other. They're not able to leverage on each other's strengths then automatically, if they're not willing to work together, then that will not be a board. That will not be a progressive board. Great. So I would want you guys to take a two... Oh, no, no, we can't take a break now. It's 5.24. I would rather, I would rather just move very fast and finish so that we can finish much earlier. With your permission... I'll go straight. I remember I'm working 
using some agenda. There's an agenda that has been set in your course outline. This agenda here is what I'm working with. Where is it? I told you by the end of the session, this was my promise to you. This was my promise to you. We have these learning outcomes. We should be able to know how to define boardroom dynamics, the evolving focus on corporate governance, the three phases of board evaluation, evolution, I mean, building blocks of a progressive board, impact of boardroom dynamics on organizational performance, ETC. That's what I'm working with. So now we're looking at group dynamics, very, very important. Group dynamics refers to the interactions, the relationships, the processes that occur within a group or team of people. It encompasses the way group members communicate, collaborate, and influence one another to achieve some shared goals or tasks. Understanding group dynamics is essential for effective teamwork, decision making, and overall group performance. Then we have information architecture. I told you that uh, we as CSS, we must ensure that uh, we are tech savvy. We love technology in whatever that we do. This is the process of organizing and structuring information to facilitate efficient navigation, understanding and retrieval of information within a system, a website, or other information environment. It is critical component of user experience design and plays a significant role in making information more accessible and user-friendly. An effective board must invest in information systems. Ladies and gentlemen, an effective board must focus on substantive issues. Si utoto, 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 ukienda katika board, ladies and gentlemen, it is about what will be able to drive this will. So the agenda must be on substantive issues. Materiality, are they material? Focusing on substantive issues means giving priority and attention to the essential, meaningful, and significant aspects of a topic, discussion, or problems. Remember, there are those directors, and of course, don't uh, put them off, but you need to know, and please be in charge of the board, especially you as a chairman. You need to be in charge. So go and tell these guys, of course, we are doing this and this. So give them, a, in this case, a chance to speak through an agenda. So this guy will come. Of course, you should be timing them. You're giving them, like, say, five minutes to do justice to this agenda. So some of them will start deviating. Whenever they deviate, please always get a, way, a friendly way of bringing them back on track. Because it is about materiality. It's about something that will be able to contribute substantially to the company that we need to discuss. All right. Like, uh, I mean, there are things we, we see in some of the boards. People even bring things from outside. All right. People in this case here, for example, who messed up and uh, did funny things. All right. Outside there, for example, over the weekend, doing some drinking spree. So now they're bringing those issues to this company's board. No, in Utoto, we are here to do justice to our agenda items. We have, I mean, an agenda that we have to do what here to talk about. So we don't want people bringing out trivial, trivial things. It's all about materiality. It's all about substantial contribution to the growth of the company we as directors, remember, some of these sitting allowances we get, 50,000, 60,000, that could be someone's salary. And this is somebody who is coming to the job every day, coming to the job every day. So please, you are a high level resource. You are an expensive resource. And ensure that whatever you're discussing in these boards is material is material, is material. Don't go to boards like there is one board. I normally try to fight those guys. They go there, if it's a three hour session, these guys are talking about politics for a whole hour. No, of course we should be able to have uh, that small time where we get to like come in, we're getting to break the ice. 
how is the weather like today? The weather is uh, 34 degrees in Nairobi, Celsius. So discussing like, how is everything? How is your family? That should not take more than five minutes. After that, then as the chairman, I should be able to call the meeting to order. Ask my CS to read the previous minutes. Let's have in this case here, like another 10 minutes where we discuss about the previous matters arising from the previous minutes. Who was able to do, because again, if we are progressive, really, we must be working on the company's resolutions. So we say that, for example, this was to be done by the audit committee. Has it been done? This was to be handed to the executive directors for execution. Has it been done? If, for example, I'm the CS, I'm the chairman of a board, where whatever resolutions we had in the last meeting, like 60% of those things have not been worked on, then I should resign honorably. I'm not effective. I'm not running a progressive board. All right. So you should be able to focus on substantive issues, substantive issues. Impact of boardroom dynamics on organizational performance. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we are running this boardroom dynamics very well, holding the bull by the horns, as this bull, of course, is changing directions. If you are holding this bull by the horns, we as the leaders of these board meetings, we as the CSS, we as the chairman, then we shall be able to impact the company's performance in a very positive way. We shall ensure that this company is run strategically. We are not deviating from the strategic direction. The board of directors are responsible for setting the company's direction a long term. We shall be there. We shall ensure, as and gentlemen, that uh, the decision-making process is good. We are able to choose those uh, alternatives that are more impactful. We shall be able to manage the risk and, of course, provide oversight to the executive committee Ladies and gentlemen, if there is anything nice that you can do to ensure that the company's performance is improved, is to ensure that the CEO is accountable. The CEO is accountable. So then if you are doing this boardroom dynamics, we shall be able to put the CEO on the spot. Every time he'll be talking about, you know, if it's progressive board, these guys must come and talk about their areas. What are we doing today? What have we been doing for the last three months? And the moment in this case, not only the CEO, the moment everybody is accountable, then automatically we shall be up. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are having this boardroom dynamics very well, then we shall be able to impact our corporate culture positively. People will be able to behave well. A board that upholds ethical standards and fosters a culture of transparency and accountability can positively impact employee morale and commitment to organizational goals. So you'll be able to impact basically, ladies and gentlemen, the company work here positively. The other way that we shall be able to improve the company's performance through boardroom dynamics is because of what here, what we call talent and section planning. You'll realize if you're good in boardroom dynamics, we know what matters to the company. We will not, we'll not let our talented employees just go. In the boardroom, we must have a whole section where we discuss about people. People. Talent and section of planning, of course, these will ensure that we retain our people for a good number of years, which will be able to boost the performance of the company. Stakeholder confidence. Confidence is the key thing. Like right now, given that uh, these external people came and rescued Kenya. Now the confidence is up there. You can see things now are happening. So stakeholder confidence, of course, once stakeholders are confident about our company, then we shall be able to do what here to move this company a notch higher. We have something called interest in human factors, human resources, management of talent, company culture, politics etc. These human-centric elements play a significant role in shaping the behavior 
productivity and overall performance of individuals and teams within an organization. So I told you that uh, if it's boardroom dynamics, whenever we are going to these meetings, don't go to meetings you as a CS, as a chairman. And then of course, in this case, you realize that uh, we are not talking about people. Remember, it's called the three Ps, the three Ps of running a company. We have profit, planet, we have people. Profits, ensure that people are accountable. People are moving these companies, profits uh, are not higher. Discuss about money, discuss about liquidity, discuss about internal controls. Because you as the CS also should be able to hold this donkey by the horns. I don't know whether these donkeys have horns. Even if these directors will start shooting their agendas, like for example, our allowances, time reduction ETC, tell them, hey, you guys, we have people, we have planet talk about the CSR, we have this uh, profit talk about here. Ensure that the board agenda is also what you're struck. Of course, don't go outside there telling that these directors, you can't talk about this. Uh -uh. But at the end of the day, when you invite me to come and evaluate how productive you are at your workplace as a CS, there are things I expect to be seeing there. Even this EABL report that I showed you here, you'll see it's pegged on those three things. It's people. It is planet. It is what here. It is profit. Profit. So the profit, of course, we are looking at the, all, all the financials, liquidity, profitability, ETC, ETC. All right. So when you talk of uh, human relations, of course, we're looking at, uh, I mean, we don't want that situation where our labor turnover exceeds 20%. That should be an interesting thing. When you see people resigning, bring that agenda to the board. You as a CS, you can mention to the chairman. So that at the end of the day, I mean, chairman should be able to come and say, I mean, our director of finance resigned. I mean, directors will pick that as a matter. Why, why did you resign? All right. So you talk of this human relations in terms of uh, performance improvement for a company, that yes, is one of those key pillars of boardroom dynamics. Boardroom dynamics, very, very important pillar. So I'd expect, of course, I'll be giving you all these. It also has this talent management. Once you spot this is a good employee, you don't leave them there. Good employees, if you don't manage them very well, they'll disappear. Think about their career progression. Think about their promotions, ETC. ETC, I would expect you guys to go and read this. Then we have shift scene, shift scene, shift scene approaches to leadership. We've come from very, very far. Remember, in those old days, we used to select leaders just by looking at their traits, characteristics here, all right? So for example, somebody who is very, very tall, somebody who is very, very tall, automatically took that guy as a what, as a lead, as a leader. But again, later on, we're able to prove that people can be short and they still become what are good leaders. You know, there are those, it's, it's, it's straight leadership theory. Like there are those people who naturally are just, according to traits theory, who are supposed to be, like for example, somebody who is charismatic, somebody who is able to speak very well without training. Those guys are supposed to be what are leaders. But now things are changing. Things are changing. So I'll go through this very fast because of time. So trait theory of leadership, the trait theory emphasized identifying inherent traits and the characteristics that make individual effective leaders, such as intelligence, charisma, confidence, confidence, and decisiveness. This approach assumes that leaders possessed innate qualities that set them apart from others. This is an old school of uh, leadership. Then we have behavioral thoughts, it shifted the focus from inherent traits to observable behaviors of leaders. Researchers studied leadership behaviors and identified two primary styles. Task oriented, focused on achieving goals. There are those kind of individuals who are just focused on achieving goals. And then we have relationship oriented, focused on building 
positive relationships within team members so that now the team members can work for you. You simply, you simply look at how do you relate with team members. The moment you are able to relate with them well, you are able to motivate them, that those guys will be able to work very well and the company performance will improve. Contingency theory basically of leadership tells us that uh, we can't behave or rather have one leadership style, no. We'll be changing our leadership styles depending on situations. It proposed that effective leadership styles depend on the specific situation or context. Leaders must adapt their behaviors to match the needs of their followers and the demands of the situation. Then we have transformational leadership. These are the ones in this case that of course have those members of progressive boards have. Most of them are transformation. They change. It emphasizes the leader's ability to inspire and motivate followers to achieve higher levels of performance and engagement. It involves setting a compelling vision and inspiring others and promoting personal development, transformation, you change, change. Then we have servant leadership where you put others ahead of you. Servant leadership focuses on the leader's role as a servant to their team or organization. Leaders prioritize the needs of their followers, empowers them and facilitate their growth and success. Then we have lastly distributed leadership. Distributed leadership recognizes that leadership can emerge from various individuals within an organization. It promotes a shared responsibility and decision making among what year team members, team members. So on distributed leadership, just go ahead and delegate some functions to some members there. Doing that, you'll be able to promote people to leadership positions. Sorry, the last one is supposed to be this agile leadership, where basically you are flexible. You're quick to take up opportunities. In the context of rapidly changing business environments, agile leadership emphasizes adaptability, flexibility, and the ability to respond quickly to challenges and opportunities. So ladies and gentlemen, when you talk of uh, leadership, there are those ones that styles, like the traits theory. We have transformational. We have, in this case here, distributed. We have, for example, what you have called what here are agile, servant leadership, where basically you are there to serve others. All right? So all this, you should be able to identify them in your boardroom. Because you have said boardroom dynamism is all about what here, not having everything the same. You will have others who are transformational. So that's a very good strength. How do we leverage on that strength to be able to make this company's performance improve? We never took a break. I would want us to end this session early. It has been a pleasure hosting all of you. And I want to believe that now you're going to make a decisive, you're going to take a bold move after you clear your CPS, because I can see, so you've got a few CPS students here to do this very important course called CS, CS. Otherwise, see you. Our next class will be on Thursday at 8 p.m. I'll give you all the notes as we agreed and then make sure that you read them before you come here because my role in these sessions is not to take you through this. My role is to ensure that uh, you are able to cover as many as possible, as many questions, exam questions as possible. So from Mwalimu to you, it's much. Bye-bye. See you again. Thank you very much. Bye.